this is another video on the application of Laplace transform and here we will be discussing example 16.6 and we will solve practice problem 16.6. So example 16.6 assume that there is no initial energy so we have to keep this in mind stored in the circuit of figure 1614 at t is equal to 0 and that i s is given so this current is given here and we have to find these three parameters so first of all we have to convert this circuit into s domain and since there is no energy stored therefore this element will be 0 from the S domain circuit of inductor and so for inductor we will just replace it with SL or 2S in this case. Remaining IS is 10UT, 10UT in S domain will become 10 over S and all other things remain changed without change and small IX will now will write it as capital IX. Small V0 will now be capital V0. And since they have, the question mentions that we have to find V0 using the Thevenin's theorem. So we know in the Thevenin's theorem the first thing we do is we separate the load. So this is where we have to find the voltage and therefore this is our load. So we separate the load. And then the voltage across this is known as the Thevenin's voltage or V Thevenin. So the first part we have to find V0S using Thevenin's. Uh, so for that we have to first of all find the Thevenin equivalent circuit. And as we said that this is the Thevenin voltage. So we have to find V Thevenin. Now if you notice carefully this current Ix does not have any path to complete and therefore Ix will be 0 and since 2 Ix or this voltage source is dependent on Ix therefore this will also be equal to 0 and so you can say that these two are 0 and for simplification we will just eliminate this so our circuit will look like now this. Now with this we have to find V Thevenin. So the V Thevenin will be voltage across this 5 ohm resistor and that will be this current multiplied by voltage. So V Thevenin will be the current multiplied by, uh, sorry, no, multiplied by this resistance. So current multiplied by this resistance 5 will be 50 over S and that is V Thevenin. And now we need to find Z Thevenin. Now for dependent circuits to find Z Thevenin, the easiest way is that we short circuit this without changing any other parameter. We short circuit and find the current ISC and then V Thevenin divided by ISC will give us the Z Thevenin. Okay. Uh, let's mark the currents. So this I'm saying that this is entering current and these two are leaving current. So the nodal equation at this point now will be current entering 10 over S. Note that this node voltage is V1. So V1 minus this voltage source 2Ix divided by 5 and third one is V1 divided by 2S. And if you simplify, multiply by 10s this, then we get this. Now here we have uh, Ix, which we have to convert in terms of a V1, so we can find the value of V1. Now from this circuit you can see Ix is V1 divided by 2s. So Ix is V1 divided by 2s, we'll put that value here. So plugging in the value and simplifying, we find the value of V1. 
uh, this voltage is we have found V1 and so we can find the current short circuit current ISC V1 divided by 2S V1 divided by 2S so this is our short circuit current and now that we have found the voltages V7 and voltage and the short circuit current we can find Z7 and by dividing the two. So Z7 is V open circuit over ISC, which is actually V7 and over ISC. V7 and from here and ISC from here. So Z7 and is 2S plus 3. And now we can draw the Thevenin and equivalent circuit. So this is our Thevenin and equivalent circuit, the voltage source and the impedance. And now we'll connect the load that we had separated. So this load we have separated, we will connect that and we can now easily find the output voltage VO from this circuit by simple Ohm's law. So the total voltage divided by total impedance and multiplied by 5 Ohm. So this is our V out in S domain. So this is the answer of the first part. Now the second part, we have to apply the initial and final value theorem to find V0, 0 plus and V0 infinity. Now we had learned this in chapter 15 that F0 is limit S tends to infinity SFX and F infinity, that is final value, F infinity is limit S tends to 0 SFX. Now note that for initial value we take the limit S infinity and for final value we take the limit S0. So in our case it will be something like this. So V0, V0, 0 will be limit this one, limit S tends to infinity S V0 S. We know what is V0. This was what we had calculated. So we'll plug that here. So S and V0, S, S gets cancelled. And very important point that when we trying to apply this limit S tends to infinity, we have to break it or we have to simplify it in the form where S will come in the denominator that is divided by S. And what this means we'll see just now. Okay, so from here after SS gets cancelled we get this and now we divide the denominator and numerator both by S so we'll get 125 over S and here it will be 1 plus 4 over S. So this is what I meant that it has to be in this form divided by S divided by S and now we can apply the limit so when S tends to infinity so anything divided by infinity is 0 and here also anything divided by infinity is 0. So 1 uh, plus 0. So 0 divided by 1 is answer is 0. Now the second part of it that is the infinity the final value theorem. This is the value plug in just like here. So plug in in and now in this case uh, we don't have to go to divide by, we can simply get, should get uh, the relation S plus uh, some value form. So just like this. Okay, so from here, this is the limit and now this is what we are meant, uh, I want to mean that we should get it S plus some form. So we have S plus 4 here and now when we put S is equal to 0, we get 125 by 4. So answer is 31.254. So this is the second part. We have found both the values. And now we come to the okay. Now we come to the third part of the question. We have to find V0T, which is the output voltage in time domain. We already had output voltage in S domain. So from here we'll use uh, partial fraction to break it and then we take inverse Laplace transform. 
Okay, so by partial fraction we can write, we know how to write this, a plus b form and then simplify a is sv0s and limit is s is equal to 0, so put this equal to 0. So s, v0s is this value, put this, ss gets cancelled, so this is remaining. Now we put s is equal to 0 here, so this is the answer value of a. And similarly for B, use this relation now. The denominator of B is multiplied here. Simplifying, get this form. And the limit is from here S plus 4 is equal to 0. That means S is equal to minus 4. So putting minus 4, the answer is minus 31.25. Now that we have got A and B, this will be the our value of B not from here and now we can readily take the inverse Laplace transform from this. So taking the inverse Laplace transform this will be uh, 31.25 and 1 over s is will be 1 and from here uh, 31.25 and s plus 4 will give us e raised to the power minus 40. I hope you have already learned this and there should be no difficulty in applying this. So this is the answer. And there's a note, notice that the value of V0 and V infinity obtained in part B confirmed. What does this mean is actually that if you put T is equal to 0 in this, then we get e raised to the power 0, 1. Um, and 1 minus 1 is 0, so this whole thing will be 0, so V0, 0, 0 will be 0, which we found in the previous slide. And if you put T is equal to infinity, this will be 0, so the answer will be 31.25, so V infinity we found in the previous slide as 31.25, so which is confirmed from there. Now let's come. Okay, now we come to the practice problem. Uh, it's a similar question actually. Uh, and we have to find these three parameters. V S is given. So let's write it here. So 30 UT is given. And we follow exactly the same procedure that we did in the uh, previous case. Our example 16.6. So first of all, this was the first part. We have to find V0S using the Thevenin's theorem. So we need to convert this into Thevenin's theorem first of all. And before that, since the question says that uh, initial energy is zero, therefore while converting this circuit in S domain, we have to keep this point in mind. Generally, we use uh, this uh, figure for converting into S domain, but since initial energy is zero, therefore this is zero. So for capacitor, we'll simply write one over S. So for capacitor, we are writing one over SC, where C is one, so therefore it will be one over S. And all others, 30 UT converted 30 over S, I small x converted I capital X, V small zero converted V capital zero, and similarly all these parameters. Okay, now since we have to find this value, this voltage, so this is our load, so we'll separate the load. For We know that for Thevenin's theorem, we have to, the first step is that you separate the load. So we're separating the load, and this is the voltage that we need to find. This is our Thevenin voltage. Now, if you take this whole loop and write the KVA equation going from one side, I hope you can follow 30 over S minus 30 over S, then Ix into 1, and then Ix into 1 over S, and 4Ix is equal to 0. And separating from here, we find Ix. Now that we have found this current Ix, we can find V Thevenin from this first loop. So 
so the left loop minus 30 ix into 1 plus v theta n putting in the value of ix and simplifying we get this value of v theta n so v theta n known okay so uh, to find z theta n as we did in the previous case we short circuit this short circuit and the current in this is known as isc and we mark these two loops also this one is ix and this current i'm calling i2 first of all from here we can find ix this voltage divided by this resistance so 30x divided by 1 for ix is 30 over s and then the second current will use this low loop so 4 ix divided by 1 over s we have found the value of ix so putting that so this is 120 is i2 now isc is sum of these two ix plus i2 therefore ixc sum of the two solving this is is now that we have found isc we can find z thevenin as before v thevenin over isc v thevenin we know isc we know so solving this is the value of z thevenin we are ready to draw the thevenin circuit so this is the thevenin circuit and now we have connected the load also here which has disconnected and solving from here uh, we can find V0 total voltage divided by total impedance multiplied by the impedance across which we need to find the voltage. Solving, solving, this is the final value of V0 in S domain. So this is first part of the question done. Now second part apply the initial and final value theorem we have already learned this theorem so just follow this for v dot limit s infinity s v0 s plugging in the value of v0 so plugging in the value here simplifying and same thing we have to try to get it in terms of divided by s form so I hope you can follow this. This is the step. We take S common from both numerator and denominator. So we get in this form divided by S, divided by S. S, S gets cancelled. Now we can put the limit of S infinity. Anything divided by infinity is 0. Anything divided by infinity is 0. Solving. So V naught naught is 24. Similarly for infinity, same technique and in this case we don't need to now divide by s, we keep it simple, so this form will be acceptable here, it's okay, put the limit and solving we find the value to be 20. So this is our second part and the third part we have to obtain V0T in time domain. Again, similar technique. This was V0, partial fraction. Solving by partial fraction technique, we get A to be 20 and B to be equal to 4. So in S domain, V0 will be this. Taking inverse Laplace transform, we get in time domain 20 plus over e raised to the power minus 0.8 ut. I hope uh, you have been able to follow this and should be able to solve this type of a problem. Thank you.